joining us for a conversation is Sean Kun Kun of Dolly Varden Silver. Mr. Kun Kun, thank you for joining us today, sir. Maurice, thanks for having me. Well, it's a pleasure to have you back on the show as Dolly Varden Silver has just confirmed an 81 meter step out on the Wolf Vein Deposit, which is one of seven high grade deposits located on the prolific Kitsault Valley Project. Mr. Kun Kun, I have a map of the Wolf Vein Deposit on the screen. Before we delve into today's drill hole 375, perhaps we should revisit drill hole 320 from last year and let's connect some of the dots for our audience members. Yes, sure. Uh, thanks, Maurice. So, um, you know, looking at hole 320, uh, 321 grams of silver over 12 meters, which was a significant step out. And really, this is a, um, a deposit that started at surface. And is, we've now got it down about a kilometer, um, 950 meters to be uh, exact. What we're seeing in this deposit, what was a vein at surface that was around 10 meters is now 30 meters at depth. So the vein is getting wider. Uh, we, we talk about it potentially being amenable to bulk mining, um, which is a low cost mining method. Um, you know, one of the other characteristics here on today's press release, uh, hole 375, is we are seeing that traditional high grade 300 gram material that the deposits averaging but what one of the highlights one of the characteristics of today's news is the strong base metal content which is taking the result from 300 grams of silver to 461 grams on a silver equivalent basis so we're seeing a significant base metal hit um, and uh, which is which is very very exceptional and speaking of that, was that a surprise to your team or were, were you expecting that? Um, what we saw with previous wolf drilling, um, you know, there was a hole that we had drilled um, last year. Um, it was something in the neighborhood of uh, 20 meters of about 500 grams of silver. And one of the characteristics there, I believe we put it out at Beaver Creek Precious Metals uh, in, uh, in 2022, um, we saw for the first time a, a, a gram of gold kick in addition to the silver. And why that was important is, you know, we had never seen anything other than 99% pure high grade silver in the, in the southern part of the property before. And so last September, when we put out the, the big step out hole at Wolf, again, around 20 meters of 500 grams of silver, to get that one gram of gold kick in that was pretty significant and is gonna improve the economics. We were surprised that as we drilled deeper below that sedimentary cap, we've tagged into a very, very meaningful um, uh, zinc and lead uh, base metal zone. So it was a surprise, Maurice. Well, it's encouraging news as always as the value propositions continues to increase here. And just let's revisit those numbers again for us one more time here on hole 375. Uh, can you give us those numbers one more time, sir? Sure. So it's 461 grams of silver equivalent over 27 meters. That was the headline hole. All right. Now, we also noticed that today that there was some uh, the first results, if I may correct myself there, on the moose vein. What can you share with us there? Moose is interesting. Um, if you if you study the the area and the history of the area, you know there was some work done on this moose vein previously, but prior to the consolidation that the company has completed, um, the previous uh, explorers only had the moose claims. There's something known as the climax claims that are next to them. The moose climax is how we now refer to it. But so so moose, there's never any follow-up done on moose. So we've gone in and we've drilled over seven meters of about 280 grams of silver. And why that's exciting is it reminds me of when we first got into Wolf at the end of 2021. You know, as we start and as we look at these old um, areas on the property where there was a limited amount of exploration, a little bit of, amount of data, and there was follow-up needed, you know, it takes some time to build up those targets. So, 
you know, what Moose represents is it's one and a half kilometers north of Wolf, and it represents the next big opportunity on the property. And again, what Wolf has materialized into is the is potentially the next Torbert mine. And Torbert is the one mine on the property that had some really meaningful past production. Almost 20 million ounces of silver have been produced at Torbert at roughly 500 grams per ton. And there's another 35 million ounces left intact that make up a 2019 resource estimate. And I was really on the search for the next 50 million ounce silver deposit, you know, Torbert being one of them. And, and it looks like Wolf has the potential to be the next. And then we're looking into the future at Moose and doing some more work up at Moose to, to build up that as well. Well, I'm looking forward to those results. Now, before we leave the project site, Mr. Kun Kun, your team has been very proactive this year, completing over 50,000 meters of drilling in 115 drill holes with 70 holes pending assaying. When do you anticipate updating shareholders with more results? As soon as they come in from, from the assay lab, Maurice. Um, so as soon as we get those number, numbers, we'll turn around. And, you know, I've, I've said from the start, even before we started drilling in May, you know, what I envision is starting to report drill results in August and continuing to report probably all the way through to February. Looking forward to it, sir. Now, today's press release was followed by last week's announcement that Hecla Mining has increased their strategic position in Dolly Varden Silver with a $10 million investment. Sir, please share the details of the transaction with us. Sure. it's uh, It's been a busy week at Dolly Varden, Maurice. Um, you know, we're very happy to welcome uh, Hecla in, in increased ownership stake. You know, I believe they're a great shareholder. Um, you know, they've, they've demonstrated that they're a sticky shareholder. And uh, you look, they're, they're looking for the end product. So um, last week we announced and closed a, a $10 million strategic investment by Hecla at 65 cents Canadian. Uh, so that represents about 15 million shares. And it takes their 10% stake up to about 15%. Um, so, you know, we're, we're happy to leverage not only their, their, their financial um, contributions, but also their, their technical contributions. Uh, their VPX, Kurt Allen, makes up um, a technical committee at Dolly Varden that Michael Hendrickson and Rob McLeod are a part of. And, uh, you know, they've been, a, like I said, they've been a great shareholder and not just uh, contributing financially, but also technically. You know, I couldn't help us notice. I looked at some of the uh, bulletin boards out there and they weren't too pleased with the transaction. And then a couple of days passed and they noticed that the share price increased and uh, it got kind of quiet out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, a, lot of, a lot of Monday morning quarterbacks out there. And I could just say, you know. You know, if you if you think you can do it any better, there's uh, you can be the fifteen hundred and one junior mining company. Um, but uh, you know, I'm I'm like Rick Rule. Uh, I think that there's two hundred companies that have something that's really significant, and I put Dolly Varden in that list, and I put it close to the top of that list. So we we like what we have. We're making some great decisions. Um, those decisions have. In, you know, increase the market cap, increase the share price. We've got great shareholders. We've got great people that are running the project. And we're going to keep going, Maurice. Now, where did the additional 6% come from? If they had a position initially at 10%, who gave up some position? So we issued that position out of Treasury. Roger that. All right, sir. And uh, I guess the question, I think, that, that some of those that were those naysayers is, why this transaction? Why now? Um, well, you know, it's a catch-22 when you have a company that's not in production. You need capital to keep going. And so, you know, my job as CEO is to try to find shareholders that are allowing us to build a business. And that's why I've gone out. And if you look outside of Hecla at 15%, uh, Fury, through the divestment of Homestake, is a 22% shareholder. Uh, so 37% of the stock, you know, over a third of the company is held by, you know, two public companies. Um, outside of those two public companies, Eric Sprott is uh, a 9% holder. And then outside of Eric, Fidelity owns about 7.5% of the company. So, and then we've got another institutions that represent about 40%. Um, so we, we're really trying to look for shareholders that have 
um, bought into my vision for the company, which is to to grow high grade silver inventory in a safe jurisdiction. Um, I believe when I took over um, the 37 and a half cents per silver ounce in the ground that we were trading at was going to be revalued at a higher level in the future. And I've seen that materialize in, in three years, we're now trading closer to a dollar a silver ounce in the ground. And not only have we seen an appreciation in the in situ value of our ounces, we've also grown our ounces. Um, and, I, and what I mean by that is through a compliant mineral resource estimate, uh, through an acquisition, we've uh, tripled the ounce count. So we've got triple the value for the ounces we have in the ground. We have triple the ounces and we've done 100,000 meters of drilling subsequent to that mineral resource estimate. So I think that's an understated estimate of what we really have. So I think, you know, we're going to continue to advance the project, the, the two ways we know how, which are through regional acquisitions and through continued exploration. Last question on this transaction. It seems that Heckler was very keen on no further share dilution through the 1st of September through next year. Can you share why? Um, you know, listen, I think Hecla, you know, as a producing company, um, they're very, very sensitive to dilution. And, um, you know, they want to make sure that we are very thoughtful on how we advance this company. And I think, listen, I, I celebrate that, um, you know, any of the dilution that I have proceeded with, I think has been extremely accretive. Uh, it's one of the reasons that, you know, our share price since I've taken over is up over 300%. Uh, so the market also thinks it's been accretive. Um, and so I celebrate some of the terms and condition that Hecla put on their $10 million investment. And I second that. As you know, I am a monthly uh, buyer of Dolly Varden Silver. You've covered the capital structure. So let's just get to the last question here, if I may. And that is, what did I forget to ask? Maurice, you covered everything, my friend. Thank you so much. It was great seeing you at the New Orleans Investment Conference, and I appreciate you having me on today. Oh, mutual, sir. So, Mr. Kun Kun, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Wishing you and Dolly Varden Silver the absolute best, sir. Thank you. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.